In this module, we're going to take a look at setting up the basic structure of our simulation. This is going to include things like setting up the generic Bifrost nodes, setting up emitters, colliders, kill planes, as well as working with certain settings such as the master voxel size and our general visualization settings. So let's get right into it. Okay, so we're here inside of Maya and we're ready to begin our simulation. So to get started, I just want to set up all of my generic Bifrost nodes. So to do that, we want to create our liquid first. Basically, whatever is going to be kind of the source of the liquid is what's going to be addressed. In our case, it's going to be this cylinder that's inside of the bottle. So I can actually open that up right there and select the emitter. And to get this started, I'm going to go up to Bifrost and I'm going to click Create Liquid. Now you might think, why am I not clicking Add Emitter? These nodes here are to be used with Bifrost after a Bifrost node is already in the scene. So if I want to add a second, third, fourth emitter, I could go ahead and use this. The fact that I need to create all my Bifrost nodes, I'm going to go ahead and start by just creating the liquid. So I'll click that and you'll notice several things happen immediately. First of all, we have many Bifrost nodes that have appeared. And we also have obviously Bifrost particles beginning to appear inside of our scene as well. So at this point, I'm not going to need to see this cylinder anymore. So I'm going to go ahead and hide it. I go here to emitter and just hit control H to hide that. So we can just focus on the particles themselves. So we do have a lot of other nodes that are here now. We'll go over these in due time, but I'll briefly discuss what they are. The Bifrost liquid node, it's kind of the big primary node. This is the one that we can actually select here. So uh, the Bifrost uh, liquid node actually has many nodes associated with it. We have the main transform node. We have the actual liquid container node, the liquid shape node, and the Bifrost, oops, kind of maybe bring that out a little bit so easier to see, and the Bifrost liquid properties container. So they all kind of are one and the same in that uh, whichever one you select, you can get to pretty much the others. So and that's pretty much this one, this one, this one, and the transform node. So we also have another node here called guide properties. We're not going to be using that one in this course. We also have the mesh node, which will be the mesh that's going to be renderable once we're done with our simulation. We don't really need that right this minute. And then this node down here is a node specifically for the properties of the emitter that we created, which was that cylinder that has the water that's now, or liquid, whatever you want to call it, that's associated with it. So let's go ahead and start with this one first. We made our emitter. Let's address the properties on it. So I'll bring up our attribute editor and let's go here into our emitter props, so our properties. So for starters, there's not too much that needs to be changed in here. Actually, uh, I believe for right now, there's nothing that needs to be changed. A few things we'll go back and address. But just in case your simulation is different than mine, uh, up here at the top, no need to change anything. The evaluation type needs to be left at mesh property. So down here, uh, this is whether it's actually going to be emitting or not. So you can enable or disable. Uh, Continuous emission we don't want on right now. Continuous emission means that this is going to continue pouring liquid. Let me show you what I mean. If I go ahead and hit play now, let me go ahead and select this as well. And by the way, you'll notice we have multiple colors here. We have the green and we have the yellow. Green are frames that have been processed and solved. Yellow have not yet been processed. Uh, Bifrost does run in the background. Again, if you want to know more about the very kind of basics of Bifrost, I do cover a lot of this in one of my previous courses, simulating large and small scale fluids in Bifrost, and that can be found on Pluralsight's website. Um, I will address the important things as we get to them, but if you want a really in-depth um, discussion of them, you can find that there. So we can see that it basically emitted once and the cylinder of liquid just continues to fall. Now, if I were to go to the emitter properties here, and click continuous emission. I'm gonna go ahead and rewind. Notice it went dark green now. Dark green basically means that it's detected a change, so it's letting us know that the cache that's here is not up to date. If I go ahead and tap rewind and hit play, it should realize that we're about to play again and wipe out that cache for us. So I'll go ahead and hit play. Go ahead and give that just a little bit more there, and okay. And you could see that now 
it's continuing to emit as it's kind of going up in the air. More and more particles are flying out of it. It's starting to look like a lot of fun, but obviously not kind of uh, what we need for this simulation. So I'll go ahead and stop that. And uh, I'm going to go here. Oops. Let me select my emitter properties. And we'll set this back to continue or not continuous emission. Now, over here under conversion, I currently have it set to solid. You can also do shell or robust. We want solid because this object that's emitting the fluid, this cylinder, is a solid closed piece of geometry. If it was open or something flat like a plane, we could use shell. Solid robust is a new form of um, a solid collider that's been introduced in the latest versions of Bifrost. It's not something we're going to necessarily need for this um, situation. Basically, if I find I'm having an issue with solid, I can go ahead and introduce the solid robust, which can actually give me coarser voxels on the inside and even give me offsets. So that way I can basically add more artificial thickness to this in case the liquid breaks through too easily. For now, we'll leave it at solid. I can continue also adding artificial thickness here as well if I needed to or change the voxel scale. We may possibly do this later. Under the emission settings here, we're also not going to change anything right now. The density is not how much liquid is going to be emitted. Rather, the density is the actual physical density of the liquid. It's a physics property. We only change this if we're changing the scale of our scene or the type of liquid that's in here. And we will be doing that later because we will be changing the scale of our scene. The expansion rate is uh, how much the water expands after being emitted. We don't want any expansion in our case. The water should sit you know, fairly calmly inside of that bottle. And we definitely don't need this to be sticky in any way. So that should be pretty good for setting up our initial emission. So what we're going to do is in the next clip, take a look at setting up our colliders, which are going to be the bottle and the wine glass. So I'll see you there.